Hey everybody, it's Pastor Mike, and I want to say thank you for joining us today at LifePoint Church. We believe Sundays are an opportunity for you to know God. We also believe small groups, the best thing we do, are your opportunity to find freedom. For more information, including locations, service times, which small groups to participate in, please visit our website at lifepointchurch.tv. My prayer for you as you listen to our message today is to encourage you and to help you take your next step to be a fully devoted follower of Jesus. Let's jump right into the message. Uh, we are going to continue in our road trip series. Uh, coming off our, our time away, uh, it's hard to be on vacation and write a sermon at the same time. And so we're so privileged to have one of our overseers. He's actually one of my greatest friends. Uh, he's been a part of our church for a long time. We met my first month uh, moving to Clarksville in 2010. I went down to meet with him and I felt like a kid on a playground. I was like, will you be my friend? Because nobody in my town wants to be my friend right now. And so he pastors a great church in Hendersonville, CIL Church, and uh, I'm honored to, to be his friend. And we've been great friends. He's, he's literally been on the journey with us the whole time that I've been here. And uh, that friendship has evolved. He's like family to me. I mean, I can call him at any moment. He's actually an overseer of our church now, which is the spiritual covering of our house. People ask, you know, who's Pastor Mike accountable to? Well, we have overseers that I'm totally in submission to. He has access to anything in my life that he wants. He can ask my kids, how am I doing? He can ask our staff, how am I doing? They can complain to him if they need to. And our overseers have been used, uh, ha have been a vital part of our ministry leadership for the last uh, 10 years. And he is without a doubt one of our favorite overseers. Every time he comes, our church gets better. Our team gets better. I get better and you will too. I want you to lean in really hard today. Take good notes for the next message in our value series. Would you please give it up for our overseer, Pastor Aaron Allison. Come on, everybody. Let's give it up for Pastor Aaron. Hey, good morning, everybody. I love coming to LifePoint because I just love what I pick up from you guys. There is a contagious culture here, and it makes me a better pastor, and it gets me excited about going back to my church and bringing new ideas, but it's more than just ideas. It's the spirit that's here, and I want to remind you of something. I'm so glad you're watching online. I'm so happy the Austin P campus is occurring and also uh, different places along the military highway. Those of you here in the room today, you're part of something called the visible church, right? You know, a lot of times we say, well, the church is just ambiguous, anyone who believes in Jesus, and that is true. But the visible church is where people come together. And I want you to know this, the effort you made to be at church, the effort you made to be at the Austin P campus, to come with the visible church makes a big difference. Like you are encouraging me today right? I mean, I know I'm bringing you a message, but you're encouraging me, so praise God for that. Hey, I also want to just say that Pastor Mike and Stephanie Burnett, I just respect them so much, and I can echo the, the kind things he said about me doubly back to him. He serves as an overseer at our church, but I've watched Pastor Mike through the years really speak truth to power. He is a courageous leader, he does not shrink back, and being around him has made me want to be more courageous. Uh, Pastor Mike is a world-class leader, but he's also just a great friend, and so I value your friendship highly, and I'm so glad to, to have this role in the church, and, and we, we love you guys. This is a special place. And because this is a special place, I'm really enthusiastic about what I have to share with you, but before I jump into that, I have to tell you something about Pastor Mike. Now, he is multi-talented, like in so many areas, but I finally figured out something he's not really good at. Yeah. The guy cannot fish, okay? <laughs> for, for the last two years, we've gone on a fishing trip together. Now, first of all, the odds are stacked against us because if it's true that the fish don't bite when people talk, put two preachers in a boat and we're in trouble. <laughs> Now, before you think that that's impressive that we could get in a boat and, and figure out a way to get down the, the stream there, we actually had a guide who took us. And this is very hard to admit. This is not very manly or this is not very courageous. The guide would bait the hook for us. <laughs> yeah, us preachers need some help, don't we? Well, I do want to tell you more about Pastor Mike. After two years of fishing with him, I want to announce his fishing count. 
he caught zero, nothing. (laughs) And I know I'm not supposed to brag in the house of God because pride comes before a fall, right? But I'm here to announce my fishing count. Ladies and gentlemen, I caught one singular fish. (laughs) But I loved that fish, man. I was proud of that fish. It was my baby. It was so beautiful to me. And, And I know I'm just, now, I'm about to be prideful again, but I brought a picture of the fish. You want to see a picture of the fish? Okay. Look at this baby right here. Yeah, I don't, I don't know if that's really a fish. It's like a minnow who overate for the weekend and then got caught. So yeah, we have fun. And on those trips, yeah, we don't catch much, but we talk a lot. And we talk about you guys and we talk about my church because our hearts are with you. And that's part of our calling are calling to pastor people and to be with people and to live life with them. And that's why I'm so enthusiastic about joining your team in this message series. Uh, The other pastors did a tremendous job sharing a value, and I'm so honored to build on their work today. And I want to share with you two values. They all gave you one. I get to give you two. Two values of LifePoint Church that will make a difference here but I want you to hear this today. This is about you. Don't just think, oh, we're hearing a sermon about the institutional church or the brand, and I'm gonna just kind of check out this week. No, the church is not a name, a logo, an organization. The church is the people. And so when we talk about values and culture of the church, we're talking about the values and culture that are inside of you. And there's something inside of you that I wanna call out today I want to remind you of something you once knew. I want to strengthen the work of God within you today by talking about these two cultural values. Here's the first cultural value is we intentionally grow. We intentionally grow. Part of the call upon LifePoint Church is to be a church that grows and a church that moves. This church is going somewhere. I've been able to see this church grow. I was able to be here uh, when this building opened before Pastor Mike even came and kind of like this little section right here was the whole church. And we've seen physical growth of the building. We've seen God add many, many people. So there's a culture of growth here in this church, but I wanna define a little bit more what that culture means and what it means for your future. And I want us to go to Matthew chapter 28. And the reason we intentionally grow is because we take seriously Jesus's call to go. Jesus called us to go. And we can see that in Matthew 28, right before he ascended to heaven. Matthew 28, starting with verse 18. Jesus came near and said to them, all authority has been given to me in heaven and on earth. So Jesus kind of qualified himself. So now we want to really pay attention. This God of all authority. Verse 19, go therefore. See, he's saying, because of my authority, I'm telling you to go. Go therefore, make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Teach them to observe everything I've commanded you. And remember, I am with you always to the end of the age. Jesus says, go. Jesus says, move. And movement creates energy. So I saw Pastor Mike trying to kind of orchestrate where you guys sit. And so I thought about doing this exercise and having us all stand up and just switch, you know, two seats from where you are. You guys want to do that? Of course you don't. Of course you don't. (laughs) Before you answered yes, I don't want to trick you. No, I'm like, we're all settled, right? We're all settled in our place and happy. And that would be a huge mistake of a communicator to try to make people move after they're settled. But if I did, we can imagine what happened if I said, hey, let's all stand and let's switch seats. The energy level in this room would change. You would just really feel it rise, feel the energy level rise because movement creates change. It creates uh, movement, excuse me, creates momentum. And momentum is a key to growth. And so we want to stay in the place of momentum. So we're always moving towards the will of God. So that means there's always going to be movement. There's going to be change. There's going to be a sense of of following the direction of God. And there is a go in your heart. 
Jesus said, go. And what's beautiful is this scripture is for all of us, but it means something different for most of us. So for some of you that when Jesus says, go, maybe someday, maybe for a handful of you, you're going to be called to another country and you're going to be called to be part of a church plant team. That is a huge go. But for most of us, the call to go might be the call to go across the street, to, to meet a neighbor different than us, to show friendliness to somebody that is living in proximity to us. For some of us, the call to go might be to change your vocation and have a level of financial sacrifice to leave a secular job for vocational ministry. But for most of us, for some of us here, especially in this service, the call to go is to the 12 o'clock service or to the 7.30 a.m. service. By the way, I've been telling people all over the nation since, since last year, I say, I know of a church with a 7.30 service. They say, no way. I'm like, yes, it's in Clarksville, Tennessee. So after they're over the shock of that, I'll say, and hundreds of people come to it. And, they don't, and I say, I know you don't believe me. I've been there. I've preached there. But the point is this, is that, yes, the shortest mission trip you may ever take is to the 12 o'clock or 7.30 a.m. service. And it's like going to church twice, right? You, you go and you free up a seat for somebody else. So there's a go within us. And so that's something to consider. The point is this, life point. We will not stay the same. We will not perpetuate the status quo. There's movement in this place. Part of the call to intentionally grow I means there's going to be movement. There's going to be a, a sense of momentum and a sense of change. And you are part of it. And this is mimicking our God. Our God is the creator after all. He created the heavens and the earth. Go to the easiest verse to find in the Bible, Genesis 1.1. It's the one we can all pretty much find quickly. Genesis 1.1. In the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. The earth was without form and void. And darkness was over the face of the deep. And the spirit of God was hovering over the face of the waters. Verse three, and God said, let there be light. And there was light. Look at this. God, God saw that the light was good. It's wonderful to know that the earth is good. We know that the earth is temporarily ruled by the prince of the power of the air. And so there's demonic activity and sin in this world, but that's not what this earth was destined for. This earth was destined for righteousness. This earth was destined for the rule of Christ. This earth is good because it is, was made by God and he called it good. And he is redeeming planet, the planet and the people in the planet and the will of God for the earth. So now we see that God is a creator and God created out of chaos, something good. He brought order, he brought structure, he brought rhythm, and he created something good. And so it is with us. God believed growth was good, and so should we. We have within us everything it takes to grow. In fact, when God made creation, he created, you'll read later on in the Genesis narrative, he created seed bearing plants that Within the fruit and vegetables itself is seed to multiply itself. And that's a principle within us, that there is within us as a church family and within us as an individual, there's seed for us to grow. God wants to create movement in your life. He wants to send you. He wants to take the seed within you and multiply it for his glory and his presence. So I know the word growth can evoke a lot of different emotions, but the word growth is about him. Because here's a statement that I want you to remember, and it's going to be on the screen. We get intentional about growth when we get intentional about God. That's what we're called to do. We're called to seek his face. We're called to value his presence. We're called to know and live by his word. And so I have enjoyed the, the growth that I've seen here at LifePoint, and I know that more, more physical growth is going to happen. Praise God for that. But that's not the only thing we're going to accept. 
We don't want to grow in quantity also. We want to grow in the things that really matter, the character of Jesus Christ, the fruit of the Holy Spirit, obedience to the word of God, power in the Holy Spirit, enthusiasm for light where we shun darkness and move towards the light. Ladies and gentlemen, God is not just accumulating people. He's accumulating stories and testimony and truth and power. And it's flowing through you and it's through, it's flowing through you by his will and by his purpose. I see God doing something powerful in this place. That's beyond the eyes. People can visit the church and they can see the size. They could see the campuses. Yes, and amen to those. But what you can't see with the physical eye is the power of the Holy Spirit transforming hearts. There's a spiritual dynamic. There's an anointing from the Holy Spirit. There's a call upon this church that you can't produce in a, by, by owning a sports club or by creating a university or by having a civics club. There is something within the church, the visible living church. There's a testimony of his, of the saints of God and all of your stories are overcoming the enemy. The book of revelation said they overcame him by the blood of the lamb and by the word of their testimony. That means there are stories that are in this room. There are stories behind this screen. Do not take for granted your story with God. Do not belittle your testimony. I'm telling you this is the work of God in your life is great because the God at work in your life is great. His work is great and we should not minimize his work in our life. Don't compare yourself to someone else. You always lose when you do that. Don't compare yourself. Don't look at someone else's success and think, well, somehow I've been passed over. Somehow I've been forgotten. Somehow I've been ignored. The, the Lord you serve is the author and the finisher of your faith. He's not done with you yet. He's not done with your story. He's not done with the outcome. I, I want to encourage you in the Lord today that when we say we grow intentionally, it's not about just getting bigger. It's about getting bigger and better for the glory of God. It's about an increase of the, the majesty and goodness of God so that when people see this place called Life Point, that yes, they may talk about the trends, they may talk about the stats, they may talk about the leadership, but all of those things pale in comparison when they talk about the greatness of the God who birthed this place, sustained this place, and will cause this place to go until he comes again. And that's the story that we talk about. So we seek intentionally God because we want to intentionally grow. That's the key. Let me just give you a couple of quick principles about growing intentionally. One, you have to embrace change. And I want you to know this is that change is, is difficult. Um, some of you, a lot of you probably are part of military families and I just respect you so much. I thank God for uh, our, our military families. I thank God for the influence of Fort Campbell upon not just our region, but our nation. And so you may have experienced a lot of different change. And maybe you're like, I'm an expert at change. And, and that, that is true to a certain level, but it still does not mean change isn't hard. Change is still hard. Just because you're accustomed to it doesn't mean it's not difficult. I think about teenagers. I raised three teenagers or young adults now and I was a youth pastor for a long time, and teenagers especially, I know that's a, that's a tough time when you begin to recognize change for the first time. You really recognize the consequences of it. I think about our Austin P students. Uh, you're in the middle of change, and you're at a time where you're forced to change. You're transitioning into adulthood, and those changes can feel so disruptive that you're vulnerable. Listen, teenagers, young adults, young professionals, I, I want you to hear this. I want you to hear this from the Lord. The Lord is with you through every change. Even if you encounter a change that is unexpected, unwelcomed, not preferred, the Lord is with you. And, and I really felt strongly when I was preparing this message that someone needed to hear that today. The Lord is with you even when a change is unwelcomed and unpreferred. He is with you and he will be with you. As I think about us as a church, as God is leading Pastor Mike and Stephanie and your leadership team, they are leading us into changes. They're leading us into a preferred future 
uh, but sometimes that feels personally uh, costly. And so when change happens, we have the temptation to, to just kind of slip away. We have the change, we have, we, we have the temptation to maybe shrink back. Guys, I'm calling you here to take this value that we intentionally grow and let that be a guide for you that when change comes that the whole community has agreed upon and that under the leadership of the Holy Spirit and the leadership of your pastors, that it won't be a time for you to shrink back, but instead you'll step in. You'll say, this is not where I stop growing, but this is when I deepen my growth and I go deeper in the things of God. And I just see that. I, I see that in you. I see that in this church. There's a great heritage of movement and activity and going and doing what we're supposed to do and, and, and doing what's necessary to intentionally grow. Preserve that culture. Don't let that go. Make that part of who you are. When my kids were younger, we used to go to Gatlinburg on vacation. And so they were all three toddlers at around the same time. And my sister had two kids that were toddlers also. So we took five toddlers to Gatlinburg. Well, that doesn't sound like vacation. That sounds like purgatory or punishment or whatever the case is. So we have some pretty good memories of that, but it was tough. And back then, I haven't been to Gatlinburg in a few years, but back then it was really hard to find a parking place if you went to lunch or something like that. So we had two vans and we found a place that was questionably legal to park our vans. And so it was suggested to me, uh, my wife Beth said, hey, why don't the guys stay, stay here with the vans and, and me and your sister, we'll take the five toddlers to lunch. Well, I thought, I, I, on the outside, I said, well, that's, that's a tough sacrifice, but okay. On the inside, I'm thinking, that's the best deal of the week. You take the five kids to the restaurant, I'll hang out and, and talk with our brother-in-law. We'll just hang out. So that's what we did. So we're talking sports. You know, we're, we're telling old stories. We're telling fishing stories about huge fish that were probably this big, as you saw in the picture, but we're this big. And so we're just having a great time. Uh, having some of the first adult conversation we had had all week long. And so the girls came back with the kids and we're ready to go. And they brought us food and all that. And we're ready to go. I'm in my happy place. And both vans, unbeknownst to us, had, had a boot on the tires where we couldn't move them. Some bozo with some kind of, I don't know who it was. It wasn't an officer. I respect all our officers. It was like a, a security whatever, I'm, not, I'm going to insult somebody. So some, somebody created in the image of God who was not using their head at the time, uh, didn't say to us, hey guys, would you move the vans? You know, would you move the vans? Instead, they put this boot on our vans and it was just so discouraging. You know, we had to get our money together and figure out a way to pay the ticket. So we, we now laugh about that story a lot. It's kind of a family story. But I started thinking about how that can connect with, with this point today. Sometimes we're in the right position, but we forget about the mission, right? I mean, my wife and sister said, you guys stay here and you have a hard job. Watch the van. Make sure the van's not stolen or towed away. But we, we forgot the mission and we got distracted and the enemy came in behind us and, and well, maybe we broke the law, so maybe we're the enemy, but whatever. Uh, <laughs> go with me for the story's sake. Came in behind us and locked up the tires. Here's the second point that I wanna if you want to intentionally grow as a church, as an individual, stay on God's mission. Stay on God's mission. Like I said already, you can be in the right position, but lose focus on the mission. You could say, you could be like right where God wants you to be, whether it be, it's, it's Clarksville or one of the other places you're watching the service from. Like, this is where God has me. This is the church I'm supposed to be in. This is the small group I'm supposed to be in. But yet, forget the mission. I'm here to remind you of the mission today. Jesus said these words in John chapter 20, verse 21. This is a powerful scripture. Jesus said to them again, peace be with you. As the father has sent me, even so I am sending you. That's incredible if you think about the power of that statement. Jesus is saying the same way the father in his wisdom sent me part of the triune Godhead so now Jesus is saying, now I'm sending my followers. I'm sending my believers. Guys, we are sent ones. We are sent to do the work of the Lord. I'm so grateful for this church's support of missions and, 
It's amazing. I, I, I know I meet missionaries often who LifePoint has supported, and I hear stories of how LifePoint is engaging in missions. Thank God for missionaries, but missionaries are not the sent ones. They are part of the sent ones. We all are sent by God. We are sent to the schools we attend. We are sent to universities we enroll in. We are sent to the jobs we put 40 to 60 hours a week into. We are sent to the industries in which we've started a business. We are sent to the customers in which we sell. We are sent to the neighborhoods and apartments in which we live. We are sent to the parks in which we walk our dogs. These guys, we are sent one, sent by the Father. Your going and being sent is not a tomorrow issue. It's a right now issue. You've been sent. And life point, I want us, as we grow intentionally, to always remember that we are sent. You know, there's a mom in the 1700s named Susanna Wesley. She had, get this, as a pastor's wife, she had 19 kids. I've known churches smaller than 19 before. So she had her own congregation right there. And she taught those children because her husband was being a pastor and doing pastor stuff. She had a method or a system to teach her children the ways of the Lord. Her 14th child, his name was John, he became a pastor. And he took that same system, that same method, and he taught people to pursue the presence of God. Now we know that historically as the Methodist movement, which was a positive, impactful movement in the 18 and 1900s in the United States of America. So I want to say this, moms and grandparents and older siblings and neighbors, don't underestimate the impact you could have on the next generation. Don't underestimate the influence that you can have. You can make a huge difference. We won't, will not know until heaven how much our influence makes a difference on people. That's why Psalm 71, verse 17 and 18, it's a beautiful song. It says, oh God, from my youth, you have taught me and I still proclaim your wondrous deeds. So even to old age and gray hairs, oh God, do not forsake me until I proclaim your might to another generation, your power to all who are to come. Yes, it's not just about our personal salvation. Man, thanks because of Jesus, he settled the issue of heaven and hell for those of us who are believers in the name of Jesus. So now it's about living a life of purpose for the Lord. And that purpose, not just for parents, but for the whole community, for the whole community of God is to pass on, pass on the, the, the word of God to the next generation. So at whatever level you do that, as a, as a family member, as a volunteer, as someone who supports even the, the vision of this church through personal giving, you're all part of the vision to reach the next generation. There was a group that was not concerned about reaching the next generation. They were around in this country in the 1800s. They were called the Shakers. The Shakers were nicknamed that because they would shake in the presence of the Lord. And so for those of you with a spirit-filled background or a Pentecostal understanding, this happened before the Azusa Street Revival and this idea of the presence of the Lord touched these people. So there were some positive things uh, with their relationship with God. But they had a really peculiar doctrine, and that was this. After you were saved, you would commit to celibacy. In case you're not sure of that word, that means sex was bad and you wouldn't have it. Now, this will be no surprise to you people that the Shakers really don't exist anymore <laughs> for a couple of reasons. First of all, it's not a very attractive doctrine to people who believe that sex is a gift from God. But practically, that, that means that they did not reproduce the next generation. There was not a replenishment of, of leadership. This can happen spiritually too, if we're not all as a community focused on passing the word of God to a new generation. That's why when we, when we think about uh, the future of LifePoint, the present and the future, here's a second value that I wanna uplift is this. We develop leaders. We, de we are intentional about growth and we develop leaders. Isn't it interesting how those things go together? We're mimicking the work of the God. We, we are doing God's work. 
God's work that intentionally grows his kingdom, and he does that through the multiplication of leaders. I want to remind you of something you know instinctively. This is a house. This is a place where leaders are discovered and developed. This is a place where leaders are discovered and developed. And that means this, that you, if it hasn't happened already, you, your story, your background, your interests are to be discovered by this church family and to be developed by the glory of God. And I want to call you to step into the leadership God has for you. We're not trying to uh, satisfy a sign-up list today, okay? We're not trying to meet a quota today. I'm sure there's some people in leadership who might have those concerns. I am speaking to your intrinsic call from the Lord. I'm speaking to your potential. I'm speaking to who God created you to be for this world. And that's manifested in this church. It's manifested in the city of Clarksville or Springfield or one of these surrounding areas that you may live. It's, it's manifested by those of you watching on the other side of the screen, wherever God finds you right now. You are to step in to the purpose of God that was put in you from the foundations of the earth because God is Created, has created you in his image and he's created you for fruitfulness in the kingdom of God. This is not something that is to bring pressure on you. This is an invitation to walk in who you really are in the Lord. It's an invitation to step in to the best version of you created by God, for God, to the glory of God. That's why Jeremiah gives us insight to why the Lord loves children and he loves he loves the unborn people who are in the wombs of their mother. Jeremiah chapter one, verse four and five says, now the word of the Lord came to me saying, before I formed you in the womb, I knew you. And before you were born, I consecrated you and I appointed you a prophet to the nations. This, this is a call that's on a person's life based off God, not based off of where they live, not based off what they've inherited in this earth, not based off their social condition. This is based off the image of God that has been imprinted into a soul. And I want you to hear that. That has been imprinted in you. You are not less than someone else you know because they were born with a more prestigious family or they were born with more money or they had more connections in your industry. Some of you have wrongly believed that you're not called to ministry because your parents weren't called to ministry. Can I tell you that the call of God is unique for you? It's unique for you because the people you meet are unique. The circumstances you meet are unique. The places you'll encounter are places that the Lord has taken you to. And he said, blessed are your very feet because you're gonna bring good news to wherever he takes you. He's gonna use your interests. He's gonna use your hobbies. He's gonna use your occupation. He's gonna use your education or lack of formal education, or he's gonna use the things that cause your heart to come alive to take you places that no one else no one else can go to those places. You're irreplaceable in the kingdom of God. The Lord has destined you. The Lord has called you. As surely as he's called Jeremiah, he's called you. He's not a respecter of persons. He, he loves all people. And, and part of being pro-life is not just being anti-abortion, which I strongly am. It's also moving people into the abundant life that God has for them. And I want you to hear this today, that whatever circumstance you're going through, whatever challenge you're going through, that the Lord sees you, you're not overlooked, you're not forgotten, you're not an orphan, you're not abandoned. He sees you and he's gonna take you through the challenge you face today. I, I know this is, I know that there's a heaviness that's on us and this is just a fact. This is not even necessarily a word from the Lord, though I hope the Lord is speaking. I know that there's some of you that are dealing with depression. I know that some of you are dealing with anxiety and I want you to hear this. I respect you. I respect those of you battling with depression. I respect those of you who are 
battling anxiety. You are not an other. You are not an outcast. You are not, an, you are not someone who is strange or weird. You are real. You have a real issue. You have a real problem, but you are courageous. You are powerful. You get out of bed today. You're going to go to work this week. You're going to take care of a kid this week. You're going to take care of an elderly person this week. And you have a life of dignity. And, and, and I, I, as, a, as a brother in Christ, sorry about that. Okay, the Lord is speaking. Okay. <laughs> The Lord is speaking. Slow down, Aaron, with the microphone and don't bump up against this. You, you have, you have a, a call from God that is admirable and that, that is good. So don't think of you yourself as any less. You are a leader. Find the leader within you. Find the, look what the, the Lord said about David in Acts 13, 36. He said, after serving God's purpose in his own generation, David fell asleep. You've got purpose in this generation. Leadership is for you. Leadership is for you. I'm going to close today with a quote from a Christian author. And I know this is going to bless you because it's blessed me. And I'm going to invite the worship team. Can, uh, we're a little bit off schedule, but the Lord's on schedule. Amen. Parker Palmer said, when I resist thinking of myself as a leader, it's neither because of modesty nor a clear eyed look at the reality of my life. I'm responsible for the impact, my impact on the world, whether I acknowledge it or not. So what does it take to qualify as a leader? Being human and being here. As long as I am here doing whatever I'm doing, I'm leading for better or for worse. And I want to say this. Some of you have wrongly believed that a temporary struggle with depression or anxiety has made you less of a leader but you need to hear this today. You are an inspiration. You are heroic. You are called and you are moving forward. You are moving forward in the purposes of God and we're developing leaders. And I just want you to, hear, I want you to hear this. The culture of life point, we're not gonna leave you behind. That You've got people who love you. You've got pastors who love you. You have a God who loves you. You don't wrongly believe. Well, look, all the people that come to Life Point, they're just, they got it together and they're successful and they have it all together. And here I am struggling with these, these issues in my life, struggling maybe with a besetting sin, struggling with something you, you've dealt with over and over again. And, and, and you need to hear this today. You're still a leader. You're still a leader. You're still here. You're still here. You're still a leader. Don't give up. Don't give up. If, you, if you're bound by sexual sin, hear this today. Hear, that, that's a natural appetite. That's a physical appetite. And it needs to be under the lordship of Jesus Christ. But you're not dirty. You're just in process. And God is calling you to holiness and he's calling you to righteousness, but he's pulling you into the kingdom. He's pulling you into the purpose and he's saying, keep coming towards me. Keep, don't give up. Don't give up on yourself because I'm not giving up on you. Don't give up. There is no mistake you make that is fatal and final when the grace of the Lord is here. And this is a house of healing. This is a house of restoration. And this is a house where the Lord has welcomed you into the kingdom for the purposes of the Lord. I wanna pray with you. Father, I thank you that your Holy Spirit was speaking to these people in this room, watching this service. Praise your name for that, Lord. Lord, I thank you, Lord, that you reminded us today that we are still leaders because you are our leader. You're leading us into paths of righteousness for your name's sake. Praise you. Thank you. For it. Can we say thank you to Pastor Aaron Allison? Man, what a word. Come on, let's say thank you. <clears throat> hey, before anybody leaves, help, just, just hold on a second here. Before we leave, I just want to take a moment and pray over you. First of all, what an encouraging word, Pastor Aaron. I've gotten more notes. I've heard this now three times today, and I get more notes every time. And we are better because of pastors like you who are investing into us. And here's what you don't know. I've heard this sermon. This is the third time. That whole last portion was inspired of the Holy Spirit for somebody that was not in his notes in the first two sections, especially to speak into the lives of somebody dealing with anxiety and depression, to see your value, to see your worth. We love you and we're for you. That he didn't preach that in any other sermon. That's called being led by the Spirit with a word of knowledge for somebody today. 
I want to encourage you at the end of our service time, if you need prayer for anything, our prayer team is always here at the end of service and we want to pray for you. And if that part of the message specifically was just nailing you in the guts, man, you need to not walk out of here thinking about it. You need to walk up here and let's deal with it. Let's pray. Let's talk to the Lord about it. But I, wanna, I want us to, uh, to wrap up with this thought, um, this, this whole set of values. These aren't just arbitrary statements that we came up with in a planning meeting one day. We really prayerfully considered what are the values that we want to shape our church. And I wanna encourage you that these values become values that you adopt. By the way, these aren't the leader's values. These are the values of our church, us, all of us. And I'm gonna ask you next week to really do some evaluative work with these values. What, how are you doing with these? But I want you to prayerfully consider like adopting these into your family. Talk about them in your company. Talk about them at work. Here's what I believe. Values shape our behaviors. We behave according to what we believe and what we value. And then our behaviors shape our culture. So the culture of our church is a result of how we act and our actions are a result of what we value, which is why this is so important because it's shaping a church that we're building in this city to the glory of Jesus Christ with multiple locations and campuses. And, but the church isn't building, it's you. And so I wanna encourage you to embrace these values in your home and your family. Talk about them with your kids and your, and your spouse and, and your friends. But the greatest, you know, we talk about we develop leaders and the greatest leader to ever emulate and to follow is Jesus. I mean, I don't know if you know this or not, he's the greatest leader to ever live. They say the test of a leader is they can look behind them and see people following them. A leader with no one following is simply a person taking a walk. <laughs> Jesus is the greatest leader ever. He has amassed the largest following crowd of all time. He still leads well and he still wants to lead you. My question is, are you following the great leader, Jesus Christ? Are you following him? Are you letting him lead you and develop you and change you? And for some of you, you say, I've never really followed Jesus. Maybe you've believed in Jesus, but you haven't followed him. There is a difference. That was me my whole life growing up. I believed in Jesus for sure. I just wasn't following him. That's by the way, how the devil is towards Jesus, by the way. Totally believes in Jesus, just doesn't follow him. But how are you doing following the Lord? And maybe this summer, I, can't, I kind of think like summertime's a good time to just let down our hair and just relax a little bit. And sometimes we relax in the Lord. I just wanna ask, maybe you've drifted a little bit this summer and you're not following the Lord like you want to. Let's just shore that up today. Let's say, if I wanna be a developing leader, if I wanna be a grow intentionally person, I'm gonna follow the greatest leader ever. I'm gonna, I'm gonna do a better job with that. I'm gonna follow Jesus. So I wanna lead us all in a prayer, whether it's your first time or the next time, you say, I'm all in with Jesus. Come on, let's pray this together. When I say amen, we're done. And our prayer team is here for you. Father, in Jesus' name, we thank you for leading us well. We thank you for speaking to us well. We thank you for this message. And we respond now by, by saying, Lord, I'm all in. We will follow you for the rest of our lives. Everybody pray this with me and mean it from the bottom of your heart. Say, God, I believe in Jesus Christ, that he died for my sins, that he raised from the dead to give me new life and eternal life. Say, I confess my sin. I ask for your forgiveness and I receive your salvation. Now say it and mean it. I will follow you for the rest of my life. Jesus, I'm all in. To God be the glory. Amen, everybody. Thank you so much for tuning in and listening to our message. My prayer for you is that you've been inspired and challenged by the message and also moved in your devotion to Jesus. If you'd like to grow in your walk with Jesus Christ, stay connected or even partner with us through generosity, please be sure to visit our website at lifepointchurch.tv. We hope you have a blessed week and we will see you next Sunday.